Good afternoon and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council's public hearing. Uh, uh, today is Wednesday, October 19th, 2022, and our public hearing is relative to urban agriculture and food equity. My name is Deborah Gross, and I am the council member from District 7 and the chair of Intergovernmental Affairs. Uh, will the clerk please read the subject of the hearing? Today's public hearing is on the Food Policy Council Ambassadors and they're presenting policy recommendations as it relates to urban agriculture and food equity. Thank you. For the record today, we are joined by Councilmember Wilson. Thank you for being here. Um, and our order of business will be testimony first from our registered speakers. Um, I will call your name. I'll try to call two names in a row. That way you know that you're up next in case you're in chambers or if you're online. Uh, Madam Clerk, we do have members uh, testimony from people online as well. Yes. And those of you um, online, so when you hear your name uh, called, you'll know you'll be up next and you'll know to unmute yourself. Um, after we exhaust our registered speakers, uh, we will take anyone who's not registered and you will have one minute to speak. As a reminder, the registered speakers have three minutes. Um, and when, you, when it's your turn and your name is called, either come to the podium or unmute yourself. And if you don't mind, please give it your full name. And it says address here, but I think we also accept just neighborhood uh, for the public record. That's important. And please keep in mind that this is an opportunity for the community to speak directly to Pittsburgh Council about the issue at hand and a time for council to listen. Therefore, council uh, does not respond to individual comments. All right, thank you. Um, so our first registered speaker is Joy Dorr, and Joy will be followed by Joanna Deming. Joy, are you uh, with us or online? I'm on Mr. Ackman and I are fortunately and you're a pattern of food, so I regret that I'm not there in person, but I'm definitely with you. First of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to testify today, I am in Zerno, but I am here. I want to thank everybody for taking the time with us about to testify as well. So today we're here to talk about my advocacy for the $10 million for justice fund, due to inflation and the rising cost of absolutely everything. We have many neighborhoods in the city of Pittsburgh and all over Allegheny County where people are struggling with basic food security, making tough choices in vulnerable populations, especially with the senior citizen population of people with children. Do I get my medicine today? Do I pay my heating bill? And as we know, today is an upper trajectory COVID cold. Early this year, heating bills are rising. We're asking for your support so people can have basic nutrition. And because a well nourished child is more likely to thrive in school and become our future leaders. And for adults, having basic nutrition prevents a lot of health issues from escalating and things like diabetes, heart conditions. Cancer could be made worse by not having the proper nutrition and need to more visits to the emergency room. We're asking you to please support this fund so we can do things like grow urban agriculture, encourage people to be active in their communities and have sustainable food, have grocery stores, and to support the many efforts underway. We have a growing homeless population of Pittsburgh to support for justice initiatives. Amongst the homeless examples of the Jubilee Kitchen, they have their own government. I volunteer at First Presbyterian downtown. The food bank supports us and we get away. It's other people that are about to speak also give away fresh produce. It really helps in a time of escalating prices. They say that 20% of this population is food insecure, but because of the pandemic and the spread of multiple different viruses, it's become a lot more of our community. It's hard for almost everybody during this time of rising prices and gasoline and prices of all kinds going up. It's hard for people to rise out of homelessness. 
and we can reduce crime by having access to better food security, people are less likely to steal and think about things like getting full employment if they're not always worried about other basic needs. Thank you. Um, so next we have Joanna Deming, followed by Sam Applefield. Hi, thank you for being here and listening. My name is Joanna Deming. I'm the executive director for Fineview and Perry Hilltop Citizens Councils. I'm here to support a $10 million food justice fund for the city of Pittsburgh. Fineview and Perry Hilltop, predominantly black and brown communities that experience food apartheid are communities where neighbors live as far as two and a half miles from the closest grocery store or food market. And during the pandemic, we heard from people that lost their jobs, that weren't able to make it to the next paycheck, people in quarantine that needed food delivered. And we were able to mobilize neighbors. Um, people actually competed to deliver neighbors to their food, um, to their other neighbors, deliver food to their other neighbors. So bringing something from the food bank to the senior center, um, People are just passionate about helping each other eat because it was so critical. Um, and as a result, we were able to deliver hundreds of fresh um, boxes of produce as well as meals. And we saw more neighbors get involved in community gardens, um, recognizing that they were a source of healthy, um, affordable, fresh food, but also a source of community. We're calling on the city to support effective grassroots initiatives like these and also provide support for food production and food businesses. The city already plays a role. You guys um, support farmers markets where there's food distribution. You manage vacant lot um, acquisition programs and adoption programs, and you provide grants and loans to food related businesses. So we just need you to kind of build on what you're already doing and establish this fund so that it can come to scale and really meet the needs of the community. Thank you so much. Oops, thank you. Uh, let the record show we've also been um, joined by Councilwoman Strasberger. Thank you, Councilwoman. And uh, next we have Sam Applefield, followed by Ama Amanda Pagmiele Pagmiello. Excuse me. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please identify yourself in your neighborhood. Great, hi, good afternoon, council members. My name is Sam Applefield. Um, thank you for taking the time to, to be here uh, today. Um, I'm speaking today on behalf of the Pittsburgh Food Policy Council, uh, which is a network of over 100 food system stakeholders, including farmers, composters, chefs, anti-hunger advocates. Uh, together, we work to create a food system that is just, equitable, and sustainable. For the last two years, I've had the privilege of working on two efforts that are really converging here today, the Pittsburgh Food Equity Ambassadors Program and the Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund. The Food Equity Ambassadors Program centers the voices of those most impacted by inequities within our food system in developing policy solutions. Residents from across the city apply to be part of this program through which they learned about how our local government and local food system work. The two cohorts of the 15 ambassadors that participated in this program were absolutely inspirational to work with. Ambassadors include people that run restaurants that provided food to those in need throughout the pandemic, that led engaging community gardens, uh, that started food distributions in their neighborhoods, and that teach their neighborhoods foods. Ambassadors and other community leaders who have participated in the Food Justice Fund Committee do all of this kind of work on a shoestring budget if they have any budget at all. From my experience with, with both of these programs, I know that there are amazing community leaders in neighborhoods all across the city, uh, including some of the speakers we've already heard from or, or will hear from later today, that are working tirelessly to increase access to nutritious and delicious food. Imagine the good that they to the least small amounts of funding. As this kind of imagining, this kind of thinking that's inspired many people to be part of the Food Justice Fund Committee, which for the last year we have um, uh, spent time researching how other funds have been set up in other cities, debated different ways to structure a fund here, to propose a vote for a Food Justice Fund in Pittsburgh. 
The basic concept of the fund is straightforward. With a simple application process, money could be made available to support grassroots efforts to address food apartheid. A number of projects could be eligible, such as efforts to support urban gardening and new market development. In body, which would include community uh, member representation, uh, would review applications and make awards with priority given to projects that are led by and are primarily benefiting people of color. During his release of the draft budget recently, Mayor Ganey stated that the budget is a reflection of our values. Creating a food justice fund is an investment in racial equity, in the personal health and well-being of residents across our city. As city council members, I encourage you to ensure that these values are reflected in the 2023 budget through the creation of the food justice fund. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, thank you. And for the record, um, you can always email your comments to city, the city clerk as well, and they distribute it to all members. I know that that testimony cut in and out a little bit. Um, and just so you know, you always have that option. Next, we have Amanda Pagniello. And after uh, Amanda, we have Barb Warwick. Amanda Pagniello, if you're on Zoom, you can unmute yourself and begin your testimony. No, no, Amanda. Okay, if you, Amanda, if you come back later, uh, we'll try to circle back. Next, we have Barb Warwick, followed by Tiara Collins. Hi, thanks. My name is Barb Warwick. I live in Four Mile Run in Greenfield. Um, I'm here today to uh, give council my perspective on a major food justice initiative in District 5, the Sarah Dixon Innovation Center. Uh, as you know, um, Greater Hazelwood is classified by the USDA as a food desert. In recent years, the neighborhood has also become the centerpiece for growth and development in Pittsburgh. Future-focused projects abound, from a proposed tech and biomanufacturing mecca at the Hazelwood Green, to affordable housing at the Gladstone School, to the expansion and revitalization of public parks in the Hazelwood Greenway. And many of these projects were outlined by the community in the 2019 Greater Hazelwood Plan. But in spite of all this new development, there was one project that remained conspicuously absent. In community meeting after community meeting with developers, Hazelwood residents have been consistently and persistently asking for a full service grocery store. At the very top of everyone's list is to have a convenient place to shop for fresh, healthy, affordable food. Yet not one developer working in the area has proposed building such a space, saying that Hazelwood should wait for the neighborhood to grow, that once the investment in Hazelwood Green has paid off, then they can have their grocery store. But the people living in Hazelwood today need a grocery store now. So community leaders like Pastor Lev and Ms. Sandra Cole McCamey decided to build it themselves. Despite all the naysayers, they are taking on food apartheid in Greater Hazelwood. And against all odds, they are moving forward on this project each and every day, working with the URA, Heinz, Macero, Keystone Development Center, the PA Center for Employee Ownership, and others to not only build the space for a grocery store, but to establish it as a food co-op owned by the people who work and shop there. This is where a dedicated food justice fund comes in. In a city where more than 20% of residents experience food insecurity and roughly the same percentage don't own a vehicle to take them to a grocery store, it's time to act. By investing to support local grassroots food access projects like the Sarah Dixon Innovation Center, not only will the city of Pittsburgh be providing much needed material support, it will show loud and clear to other potential investors that we believe that economic growth and prosperity in our region depend on a just, equitable, and sustainable food system, and that together we can build it. So, I encourage council and the mayor's office, as we hammer out the details of next year's budget, let's join the trailblazers in Philadelphia, Chicago, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. Let's put food justice on the table. Thank you. And again, if, if, 
Thank you. And just for the record, if you, uh, similarly, if you don't get to the end of your comments, you can always email them to us for the record. Um, so we, next we have Tara Collins, followed by Jamie Christian. Good afternoon, City Council members and staff. My name is Tiara Collins, and I live in the Hill District. I've lived in Pittsburgh for 48 years. I am a Pittsburgh Food Equity Ambassador and a member of the Pittsburgh Food Policy Council Board of Directors, a former SNAP user, resident, and parent advocate. I am here to call on the City of Pittsburgh to create a $10 million Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund to support grassroots efforts to address the food ap apartheid in our city. I have been lucky to always know what it is to eat healthy. This is something my grandmother taught us to garden and grow fresh fruits and vegetables. As a mother of five, this is something I've passed along to my, down to my own children as well. Two of my kids have special needs, a 10-year-old with Down syndrome and a 28-year-old who, who is on dialysis seven days a week. Knowing about healthy foods and eating was very necessary for my daughter, who had been diagnosed with blood pressure at the age, high blood pressure at the age of three. These experiences with, with food led me to become a, a to become a Pittsburgh Food Equity Ambassador, which was a great honor for me. I never even knew something like this even existed. Being a part of something so amazing, going around to, to different neighborhoods to see the fresh urban gardens that existed and how they were trying to support their neighbors, their community, is a blessing. But they could do so much more if everyone involved had support, your support. Being able to serve a bigger part of their community will make a big change in low-income neighborhoods, less stress, violence, and less children being hungry. The Food Justice Fund will create opportunities for economic stability, entrepreneurship, improving community urban farming, and creating a stronger, safer communities of all, which contributes to improving determinants of health. Some, something I will never forget is when I heard our mayor, Ganey, talk about the first house he and his wife moved in and how she offered him a pier from off the tree that was in their yard, and he wouldn't need it because he had no idea that it was better for him than the one he wanted to buy eat from Giant Eagles. But if, but if someone had taught him the importance of eating healthy and taught him to pick his own pear growing up, he wouldn't have been afraid to eat the pear from the yard in, from his yard. He also said that now he does a little bit of gardening, and his wife does a lot. In closing, my my son says something one day I will never that made me that made a whole lot of sense to his siblings, but I had wished he had said it to me instead. He said, "No one ever taught mom how to be a mom, just like no one ever taught us how to be kids. We are all learning." along the way. She is doing the best she can with, with what she knows and have to work with. So we are asking that the city council supports the investment, the first ever $10 million Pittsburgh Food Fund, Justice Fund, and, let's, and let them learn together, and let us learn together. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next we have Jamie Christian, followed by Daniil Hewson. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Thank you for your time. It's a pleasure to be here and speak with you today. My name is Jamie Christian, and I am the founder and executive director of a small nonprofit called Let Us Turn Up the Beat Sustainability Collective. I'm here to call <clears throat> on the City Council of Pittsburgh to create a $10 million, $10 million Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund to support grassroots efforts to address food apartheid in our city. I have quite a bit to share and not much time. But if you remember one thing I say today, please let it be this. Living beings need food to survive. Food security and access to healthy food should be a top priority. To give you a little background information, I am a former city of Pittsburgh resident, and my organization is currently based in the South Hills, mostly because I can't afford to live in the city of Pittsburgh. I'm a single mom with two kids. However, our work over the past seven years has been with schools who service the city of Pittsburgh, as well as individuals and families, and other nonprofit organizations within the city limits. Most recently, we've hosted community sustainability workshops at the Thelma Levitt YMCA, and also provide a fresh food vending kiosk at the Allegheny YMCA on the north side. 
I started the organization as a school garden initiative shortly after I started creating sustainability education programming. With the onset of the COVID pandemic, we created our community outreach program, OM, followed by <clears throat> excuse me, our food access initiative, Native Nosh. We're now moving into having a more active role in food systems policy and advocacy. Our most recent projects involve working with local and urban, local urban and rural farms to provide a marketplace that is profitable while addressing their needs of increased capital and a more efficient supply chain. In a matter of seven years, we have grown from building our first school garden to piloting a program that has potential to become a fund to provide financial stability to farmers in our region. Future programming that we are involving in, involved in involves bioengineering <clears throat> and industrial hemp plastics on the horizon. This summer, I had the pleasure of creating a non-medical mental health support program and the amount of research I found addressing a link between food apartheid and mental health was staggering. One study suggested one study in particular showed individuals experiencing food apartheid are at a 255% higher rate to experience mental health issues than those who do not. Unfortunately, on my way here, I received word that a single mother who we helped during the pandemic committed suicide. The stress of not being able to provide for her family and lack of resources was just too much for her. Unfortunately, she's not alone. And it's not just consumers mental health is at risk. It's producers, restaurant workers, farmers, <coughs> excuse me, and families. The resources we provide are needed, and my organization has done a lot to, in seven years, and we've done it with little to no resources. This may be the first time you've ever heard of me or my organization, and I'm happy to share my story and experience with you. As I stated previously, we are small and limited. Sorry, I'm going to have to ask you. I apologize. That really is very moving testimony, but we really do need to keep on other people's schedule. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Danielle Houston, followed by Olivia Carter. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, yes, can we can me? hear you. You can identify yourself and your neighborhood for us. <laughs> Hi, thank you for being here this afternoon. My name is Danielle Houston, and I'm the Executive Director of Greater Pittsburgh. Greater Pittsburgh is an urban agricultural nonprofit, and our mission is to teach people how to grow food and promote the benefits the gardens bring to our neighborhoods. We envision a day when everyone in our city has the ability to eat and grow fresh and local healthy food. We were founded in 2005, and we support over 100 community gardens, 50 school gardens, operate four urban farms in the Greater Pittsburgh area, where we distribute over 28,000 pounds of fresh produce and, and supply urban growers with over 20,000 seedlings annually. I'm here to call on the city of Pittsburgh to create a $10 million food justice fund to support grassroots efforts to address food apartheid in our city. This is important to me and our network because an investment into urban agriculture is a key tool to alleviate food apartheid and create sustainable neighborhoods. The Food Justice Fund will address systematic inequities by investing in urban agriculture and food growing projects in our, re in our region. Whether you're raising vegetables at home or in a community plot, the benefits are multiple and rich. Gardening provides an abundance of healthy, fresh food. This is especially important in communities that lack grocery stores or other sources of produce because of systematic oppression resulting in food apartheid. Gardening helps folks save money on food groceries, and if you grow your own, you know your food doesn't have any harmful pesticides in it. Gardening um, brings people to the earth and creates a sense of place. This connects neighborhoods and beautifies backyards and they can last throughout our city. Gardening provides a reliable source of fresh food and a boost of physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Gardens are also a sense of self-sufficiency and collective empowerment. They are among the oldest forms of mutual aid and food justice. Even before the pandemic, one in five Pittsburghers were being food insecure, meaning they were unable to access adequate food. Growers throughout the region have stepped up to address the increased need for fresh fruits and vegetables, and our community gardens and urban farms help support local food pantries with their own produce distributions. The gardening boom is real. Um, we at Grove Pittsburgh continue to feel the urgent request from residents who want to learn how to grow their own food for themselves and for their communities. At Grove Pittsburgh, we've grown and sold more plant seedlings in each of the past two years than ever before. 
And so in conclusion, I'm asking that the city of Pittsburgh support and invest in the first ever food justice fund. So thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Next up, we have Olivia Carter followed by Abdul Kal. I'm going to forgive me here. Abdul Qadir Sharambo. Good afternoon, city council members and staff. My name is Olivia Carter and I currently live in Squirrel Hill North. I am a food systems advocate, current SNAP user, and I've had the privilege of working with the P Pittsburgh Food Equity Ambassadors um, as an AmeriCorps VISTA supporting the program and the amazing work that they do. I'm here today to call on the city of Pittsburgh to create the Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund and invest $10 million over a four year period to support grassroots efforts addressing food apartheid in our city. And I should say that's at least $10 million. The Food Justice Fund will specifically address systemic inequities that frame how our food systems operate and how current and a lack thereof of current policy impacts how we relate to each other and our food systems as inherently political beings within our United States. However, we are also able to relate to each other with love and care. And as our political system is interconnected within many of our other intersectional ecosystems that many have touched on today, such as race, the economy, and our environment, this is a unique opportunity to amplify our community's strengths with love and care within our city and provide much needed financial support and resources to support those who are already doing the amazing work and empowering both new and current neighbors to this work of growing food and growing our own. So I'd say all of this to say that this will increase community resilience and our economic stability. And if it is policy and political decisions that brought us here today, why can't we support something good, positive policy that demonstrates care for our communities and our food? We know what we need and we know that we need the financial support and resources to back our community leaders. So thank you for having me here today for your time and consideration. Thank you all. And let the record show that we are also joined by Councilman Burgess. Thank you, Councilman. Um, so next we have, and again, forgive my pronunciation, Abdul Qadir Sharambo, followed by Colleen Young. Uh, my name is Abdul Qadir Sharambo, and uh, I will say assalamu alaikum to everybody, which is hi. Uh, I'm the executive director of Monoculture Farm, and I'm also uh, one of the Pittsburgh immigrants people that lived in the city area. Uh, I was born and grew up as a farmer until right now with uh, the elders inside the community, including with my parents. But today, on at this time, I'm here uh, to express uh, food in culture in our that is in our priority in uh, in Pittsburgh immigrant communities due to healthy eating choice as uh, when it comes to food uh, everything we eat in so far right now is new to us uh, nothing usually that we normally eat back home so as being a farmer and create a city vacant lot, uh, we experience and learn we miss a lot of things. And uh, today uh, we are growing here in the city of Pittsburgh and we are happy to see that. And we also need to see more of a uh, cultural food tradition as a part of protecting our in, uh, identity of food as medicine. And uh, for that reason, uh, today I'm, I'm here to call to create the 10 million Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund uh, to support that, uh, the food side of this city because we know food is, there is no food. If there is no food, then hunger is there. So we would like to have at least food. And on top of that, we don't want to remind how our uh, African government that pushed all the farmers behind and they never make it priority inside of their government system. And uh, according to that, I'm here in the city of Pittsburgh 17 years later uh, that we sit down on a table coming up with an idea how to push forward uh, to have a fund for their farmers or gardeners around the city area. 
and thank you and I will also say thank you everyone who supports this idea. Thank you. Next we have Colleen Young followed by Cynthia Kenderson. Good afternoon city council members and staff. My name is Colleen Young and I live in the Pittsburgh Lincoln Place neighborhood. I'm also the Director of Government Affairs for the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank. I'm here today to support the creation of the Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund. The food bank currently partners with over 75 food pantries in the city of Pittsburgh alone and more than 1,100 partners across our 11 county service area. We see the direct impact that inequities in the food system have in our communities and on city residents who struggle daily to make ends meet. We also have seen during the pandemic that those who were hardest hit were often the same people who were already facing disproportionate food security and low food access. A recent report by Feeding America highlights the ongoing racial disparities in food insecurity that were exacerbated during the pandemic, noting that food insecurity is influenced by multiple factors, including poverty, unemployment, and a lack of household assets, all of which are disproportionately experienced by communities of color. Conversely, addressing food security leads to a variety of positive impacts for both the individual and the entire community, including economic growth and stability and reduction in overall health costs. The American Rescue Plan funding provides an ideal opportunity to address food security as a public health emergency. The American Rescue Plan was designed to, quote, build a bridge to an equitable economic recovery. The National League of Cities outlines that eligible uses for this funding include responding to public health and negative economic impacts of the pandemic, and specifically mentions supporting disproportionately impacted communities. During the height of the pandemic, targeted economic supports alongside increased food pantry and food rescue distributions supported many families and residents to access food. However, as the public health emergency declarations are coming to a close, so are additional food assistance resources. While the food bank and our partners will continue to advocate for federal and state funding and policies that support food and economic security, the Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund will provide a critical opportunity to directly support our community members who will be impacted by imminent funding gaps, significantly increased food costs, and ongoing food system inequities. Ultimately, reducing food inequities will require the kinds of systemic change and innovation that a food justice fund can activate. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Cynthia Kenderson, followed by Raqui Bay. Greetings. My name is Cynthia Kenderson. I am a food policy ambassador and currently an artist and resident in the Hill District. I am here to support the Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund and its grassroots efforts to address food apartheid in our city. I concur with all of my fellow cohorts who have spoken and who have yet to speak. I am personally not here to speak on whether or not our food system is broken or intentionally functioning as planned. I am here to share a vision, i.e. my suggestion. I titled this slot, Make Public Spaces Lovable by Planting Edible Trees Fruit. In particular, Penn Avenue, which is roughly a 10 mile radius from Wilkinsburg to Gateway Center in downtown, passing through multiple neighborhoods, Point Breeze, East Liberty, Bloomfield, Lawrenceville, and et cetera. This will benefit the environment by removing air pollutants, conserving energy, and in turn economics, real estate via increasing property value, but the most important food equity through easy, common, and accessibility to fruit. This not only benefits the homeless or less fortunate, but the runner, the biker, the scooters, or simply walkers passing by who need a quick dose of natural, holistic nutrients. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Next we have Rakid Ra Ra Bay. I'm, I'm actually, sorry, 
Ms. Bay, I think I've always pronounced your name wrong. I Forgive me. And followed by Tamara O'Brien. Rakib, are you there? We can, uh, if you don't see, okay. If, if you get back, we'll try to circle back to the um, speakers that we might have just missed online um, after all the other registered speakers. Um, so next we have Tamara O'Brien, followed by Zina Scott. Tamara O'Brien. No, okay, I'll mark you down too. Zina Scott, followed by Dante Gordon. Good afternoon. I'm Zena Scott. I'm from Homewood, and I'm in District 9, one of the largest districts in this city that has food apartheid. One of the largest areas in the city, Homewood, having vacant lands. With the vacant land, it would be nice to do something like Chicago has done. Chicago has taken a lot of their vacant land in their low and uh, black and brown communities and turned it into urban farms. They have taught the people how to farm, how to grow, how to sell. They are hiring from the neighborhood. They have a bus that goes out with the food and sells it within the neighborhood and also an area right at the farm that people can come to and get food. This is such a good use of vacant land. We have done better in this city this year in cutting the weeds, but it would be so great if we could use that land to grow food for our children. One of the things we must all remember, our children of today are our adults of tomorrow, and they will keep us going in our old age. So we need to rethink cutting the weeds is not the only thing we can do with this land that's vacant in our cities. And giving it to people to put large buildings on is not the answer either. We need to utilize the land for the purpose that it was made for. Green infrastructure with food growing on it to feed our families. I would also like to correct the spelling of my name if you don't mind. It's Z-I-N-N-A. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Dante Gordon, followed by Lisa Freeman. Uh, good afternoon, council members and staff. My name is Dante Gordon. I'm a food equity ambassador out of Beachview, and I would like to say thank you for having us here today and for giving me an opportunity to speak on behalf of myself and fellow community members. I am a lifelong resident of the city of Pittsburgh, and before I joined the Pittsburgh Food Equity Ambassadors Program, I knew nothing about food insecurity or the efforts involved with fighting for healthy living and such. Being an impacted resident of the community and representing uh, District 4 by way of Beachview, has taught me to use my voice and knowledge to help the people of my community in need. I'm here today advocating that city council help and support low income communities and families in need with regards to food apartheid. I also would ask for support in the extension of the Pittsburgh Food Equity Ambassadors Program in hopes to draw attention and more community involvement at making Pittsburgh a food secured city, making food more accessible and an overall healthy place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Lisa Freeman followed by Jack Stewart. Good afternoon, council. My name is Lisa Freeman. I'm a homeowner and business owner and resident of Manchester. I have gardened for many, many years on city property in Manchester. I had a school community garden with one of the poorest schools, Manchester in the Pittsburgh Public School District. I've uh, 
Barton and different areas of Manchester, and now finally I bought a property from the city of Pittsburgh, tore it down, and I have a quarter acre in Manchester. I am the owner of Freeman Family Farm and Greenhouse. I think I'm the only black owner here in the city or the state. Uh, my husband and I, we did this as a partnership in providing food for our neighborhood to make sure that none of our residents, our vulnerable citizens, or the marginalized, medically vulnerable, would go without food. My husband was a, a U.S. Uh, United States veteran, and uh, several years ago, he became diagnosed with cancer. It, what the diagnosis was always uh, fatal. He was, it was a... Uh, uh, diagnosis that could, was untreatable, but we continued in the work in providing for our community. Last year, um, it came down to us, and we we're farming in our garden, and the fresh air and fresh produce and eating healthy and clean, it recovered, it restored his soul and his health. The cancer had disappeared for two to three years. <laughs> Unfortunately, last year, the, the cancer rec recurred. But it was eating clean, eating fresh, eating wholesome, being out in the door, outdoors, being amongst neighbors that restored him and gave him better health. And because of that, we continue in our work. And because of that, I'm still frustrated because at the ground level, there's no, no, no one at the table talking. But you'd rather talk to developers who are coming on the north side and giving them astronomical amounts of money to develop things, but no green grocer. So we took it upon ourselves. And me, one lone person, 300, over $300,000 we have raised to create and build our own green grocer. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, CDC, Department of Health, local foundations, a new foundation, uh, our community residents, we're all at the table, but I look today, even at the council, there's still a few members not miss, are missing here. That is the frustration that not enough people are taking this seriously. Good health and vegetables is medicine. And in our community, we are a food desert, and some talk about food apartheid. We, I have taken it on myself to make sure our community is in good health. And Councilman uh, Gross, I commend you for taking the challenge and the lead in this. I would want all everybody here to, to support the $10 million uh, to be given to a, a food justice fund. Thank you for this time. Thank you. Next, we have Jack Stewart, followed by Pastor Luchua Love. Uh, hello, my name is Jack Stewart. I live in Polish Hill. Um, so in Polish Hill, um, re this summer, we started planting a lot of fruit trees in a city-owned lot, thanks to the help of Deb Gross. Um, and, you know, I can walk down the street every day and just pick pawpaws, figs, uh, cherries, blackberries. Um, and I don't see why the whole city doesn't have things like this. Uh, Pittsburgh has one of the most amount of open green spaces I've ever seen in a city. Um, and it, the city, I think, could do more to advocate for permanent plots of land to be used by people in the communities for things like fruit trees. You know, you plant a fruit tree, it'll be, it could be there for 50 years feeding people and it doesn't take much maintenance. Um, and, uh, you know, something else that isn't, a lot of people don't want to look at or talk about is uh, climate change and uh, the the water levels globally being threatened and food being threatened and you know one way of addressing food security is grocery stores and things like this but um, in the event of any issues with the supply chain or global food supply that doesn't help uh, food becomes more expensive and I think that it's important to look at what we can do with the land that we have, um, which is um, plant more fruit trees. The, the public works could plant fruit trees. Um, the city could fund 
members of the community and, and give them money and pay them for what would amount to less than a hundred thousand dollars a year for a whole growing season which is six months uh, you could train and pay people in communities to utilize the city-owned proper lots um, in the communities to plant food forests and fruit trees and protect them from being developed so that people can benefit from that for decades um, and I think that Pittsburgh is a unique place and has a lot of potential um, for making something like that happen. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Pastor Lutual Love followed by Patrice Bolomope. That's right. I said that right. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm Pastor Latour Love. I'm the pastor of Praise Temple Deliverance Church. I'm also the co-founder and vice president of the Greater Hayeswood Coalition Against Racial and Ethnic Disparities, GH Care in Hazelwood. I um, spoke earlier at the press conference, and one thing I said was, I hope everyone stopped using the term food desert to describe where I live and where people like myself live because a desert is something that is uh, God created. It's, it's naturally abandoned. Our communities, which some people like to describe that way, there's nothing natural about it. God did not create it. Man created it. People are starving because of lack of good policies. People are starving because of the lack of concern, neglect by man and women who have the power to change things. People like you. And I'm so glad that to see you counsel women and men here today. And I'd like to thank Councilman Gross for helping us get here because not enough attention is being given to the, to the children that are dying. The children are failing from school. They talk a lot about the virus and, 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 and all of that, keeping children from going to school, but lack of food in their belly and them being hungry keeps them from studying. People are, uh, parents are committing suicide throughout the United States because they're hungry. We ask that we don't get become that kind of third world country where we forget about feeding our own people. You know, God said to Peter three times, uh, if you love me. And finally, when Peter said, yes, God, Jesus you know, replied to Peter and said, if you love me, feed my people. And I'm saying it to you, and I'm not near Jesus. <laughs> But as a minister, I'm asking all the ministers and people who have that kind of taste in their throat to start a spiritual revolution in the mind. Make that spiritual movement to feed God's people. And do so without prejudice. No matter what community you, they live in, no matter what race, nationality, let's feed the people. And let's do so any way we can. Support the food justice uh, movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm glad to serve as co-chairman of that movement. I guess that's the sign. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Next up, we have Patrice Bolomope and Angela Williams, followed by Angela Williams. Excuse me. Good afternoon, city council members and staff. Can you all hear me? We can hear you. Okay, good. My name is Patrice Paula Lope, and I live in Allentown. Um, I live in Pittsburgh my whole life, so 38 years now, and I've been in Allentown almost five years. I bought my house there. Um, 
I was fortunate enough to be able to start a community garden there, help people's community garden with my community with the help of a grassroots grant from neighborhood allies. So, um, yeah, I'm proud of that. Um, also, I'm an urban farmer, and I just want to, I just want to call and see if it's hard to create a 10 million Pittsburgh. $10 million Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund to support grassroots efforts to address the food apartheid in our city. While working on this garden, it's been about four years. Um, so that's, it started during COVID. So we got to see the rise. Things happen, people have to come to school. I'm also a member of the children. And I created the garden with the community so that we would have the space together and learn about um, food security, how it grows food. Um, different ways they interact with each other basically because it was an abandoned lot, three lots that were abandoned. So we came together to clean it up and create a space that we could gather and learn together. Um, I also feel like this fund would just address a lot of systematic inequalities in in by increasing investment in our communities. Um, Allentown specifically, we don't have a lot of access to fresh food. So this would be awesome to see an investment or neighborhoods like that was out. So that's all for today. I just wanted to be able to voice that. And I appreciate y'all giving me the opportunity to do so. And thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Angela Williams, followed by Laura Perkins. We see Angela Williams. Is Angela Williams on here? No? Okay, I'll mark Ms. Williams down and circle back uh, after all our other registered speakers. Uh, that makes Laura Perkins next, followed by Helen Gearhart. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Good afternoon, city council members and staff. My name is Laura Perkins. I live in Friendship. I was born and raised in East Liberty. I moved to Washington, D.C. and Central America to do human rights work. But I moved back to Pittsburgh five years ago to address the human rights situation here in my hometown. I work at Casa San Jose, a Latinx community organization whose vision is a Pittsburgh region that celebrates Latino culture, welcomes immigrants, and embraces inclusion, dignity, and respect. I'm here on behalf of the undocumented Latinx community of Pittsburgh to call on the city of Pittsburgh to create the one, uh, the $10 million Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund to support grassroots efforts to address food apartheid in our city. We want to echo the comments that a lot of folks have been saying already. Uh, this is important to me because I cannot do my work as the emergency response organizer to defend, to defend my community's human rights if they do not have access to healthy food. If a community's members community members' children are starving, I need to address that before I meet their needs, like with legal, educational, or, or mental health services. The majority of the community that Casa San Jose serves is not eligible for food stamps. Having a social security number is a requirement for food stamps, rental assistance, social security benefits, etc. Without a social security number, our community members pay, pay local, state, and federal taxes without receiving most of the benefits of those taxes. This proposed food justice fund would be one of the few resources that would actually be able to benefit our immigrant communities. This should be a, pr a priority for a city that claims to be a welcoming city. Food is directly linked to health. Our community members suffer very high rates of diabetes, depression, anxiety, all of which are affected by our daily diets. Again, since our community members are in the process of getting legal status and social security numbers, they do not have access to medical insurance. They cannot afford to go to the doctor for regular checkups, and their economic situations force them to wait until it is an emergency. Having access to affordable, healthy food would mean the world to our community. As a city, we need to prioritize addressing the systemic inequities by increasing investments in communities most impacted by food apartheid, like our undocumented Latinx population. In conclusion, Casa San Jose asks that the City Council support and invest in the first ever $10 million Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you so much. Next, we have Helen Gearhart, followed by Anna Johnson. Hello. Um, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Helen Gearhart. I live in North Point Breeze. I'm speaking today as a longtime member of the Pittsburgh Food Policy Council, um, a member of the Human Rights City Alliance, and the Pittsburgh Green New Deal. 
Um, I strongly support the previous commenters, if commenters in their support of a dedicated food justice fund. Fund, I would like to underline and expand upon a few of the points that have already been made. There's an enormous amount of research by our most esteemed medical institutions over many years that nutritious food access is critical to basic health, helping to prevent a host of acute and chronic diseases such as cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, especially for historically marginalized groups. That research shows that nutrition is especially crit critical to reducing high rates of infant mortality and mortality of black and brown women, both of which are among the highest in the nation here in Pittsburgh. The evidence is also well established that nutrition is vitally important in strengthening our immune systems and the long-term outcomes in recovering from all illnesses. And new evidence shows that this, this holds true for COVID as well. We need to consider healthy food as one of the, the many important measures to protect residents from the impacts of a pandemic, which thanks to rapidly evolving COVID variants will probably continue for many years. Presently, COVID continues to take a significant toll, especially in communities of color, not only in terms of hospitalizations and deaths, but also as the disabling damages of long COVID to heart, brain, circulatory, and pulmonary systems becomes more clear. Current research is showing long COVID is estimated to affect one in five of people who test positive, even young and healthy people with mild initial symptoms. We must make sure that healthy food is available to the escalating number of those who struggle for months or years to recover from COVID, often unable to work or care for family, neighbors, and community networks. Also, we must consider not only the impact of national and global events, such as the war in Ukraine, one of the main breadbaskets of the globe, and rising inflation on the ability of Pittsburghers to buy healthy food, we must consider the escalating impacts of climate change and invest in the local food shed and systems, including urban farms, gardens, and markets, to prepare for the short, medium, and long-term breakdowns of food systems we see across the globe, which again, will most impact the most vulnerable members of our community. Environmental justice means that we must recognize the history of both food apartheid, and we must also prepare for the future and support the leadership of Black and brown members of our community that will be most impacted by current and coming changes. Uh, thank you so much, um, Deb Gross, for supporting this effort, leading this effort. Thanks to all here who have contributed so much of their wisdom and long-term dedication to food systems in, in Pittsburgh. Thank you. Next, we have Anna Johnson, followed by Eliana Gomez. Oh. Okay, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Okay, my name is Anna Johnson. I live in Stanton Heights, um, and I volunteered regularly at Duncan Park, a community-managed orchard and natural play space in Upper Lawrenceville since 2015. And so while our community food growing space has benefited greatly from receiving small grants to support our work throughout our time as an organization, the most important support I think we've had for this project came in the form of paid staff time to coordinate and organize the work we did on the ground in the garden from Lawrenceville United, which is a nonprofit based in Lawrenceville. So without having the consistent and reliable support from LU, I think our primarily volunteer run space would absolutely not have survived this long. So I wanted to talk to speak today because while I absolutely support investing in food justice and equity programs in Pittsburgh, and I think this fund is a great idea, I have some concerns about focusing on addressing urban agriculture and food equity, primarily through a granting program like this, in that it may not support the need that many of our small, primarily volunteer-run community groups trying to work in this space have for access to reliable, centralized, and consistently present expertise and administrative support. Uh, we need this to navigate all the day-to-day -day complex logistics of running programs that support our communities and connect our programs to resources while preserving institutional knowledge. Even as we know that individual groups doing the work towards full food justice and equity are gonna turn over throughout the city. So I would really love to see some of these funds or funds from future programs working in this space go towards also supporting additional permanent city staff positions that will pay a full-time living wage with benefits and will attract and retain the kind of centralized, accessible expert support that allows smaller community-based food justice groups to survive the loss of core founding members to new jobs and new commitments and also connects our groups to one another so that we can better learn from each other in the broader Pittsburgh community and not each individually having to reinvent our wheels. 
Um, thank you so much for your time and thank you everyone for your work in this space. Thank you so much. Next, we have Eliana Gomez, followed by Ann Sanders. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we got you. Okay. Hi, my name is Eliana Gomez. Um, I work in District 3 um, for the Voices Against Violence. We serve primarily um, like the South Hilltop area neighborhoods like Beltuber, Allentown, um, Knoxville, not Washington. Um, so I'm a program manager there, mostly focusing on our youth education program. Um, and I'm speaking today um, in support of the Food Justice Fund because it will help our children thrive. There's a huge gap in food access in South Pittsburgh and organizations such as ours um, are preparing to expand a lot of our services to help address this need. Um, and we anticipate our programs will have a significant impact, but without the significant investment of an insustainable food system in the South Hilltop area, um, the gap in food access will still remain. So our, our families are already stretching their dollars to the max. Um, every single child enrolled in our after-school program currently qualifies for free and reduced lunch. And many of them are on food stamps already. So they're really just struggling to make ends meet most months. And the cost restrictions of food are becoming more and more prohibitive um, for a lot of them to get the nutrition that they need. Um, grassroots organizations are doing what they can throughout the city, but in order to truly address this issue, we need the commitment and investment from city council and the gaming administration to address food apartheid in our city. Our kids deserve to eat, they deserve to have a quality education. These things go hand in hand. So I urge you on behalf of my students to commit to the $10 million for a food justice fund in the city of Pittsburgh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Ann Sanders followed by Joy Stanilka. Hi, good afternoon and thank you. My name is Ann Sanders. I reside on Radium Street in Observatory Hill. I'm also the public policy advocate at Just Harvest. I am here in support of the Food Justice Fund to promote food equity. There are so many reasons to invest in community projects that address food apartheid, and you've heard about so many of them today. I want to focus on the returns of such an investment. Um, it is well documented that the lack of access to healthy food greatly harms a child's academic performance, lower test scores in math and reading comprehension, that it harms their social and emotional development, it's related to increased anxiety, aggression, school absenteeism. Teens who experience food insecurity are much more prone to depressive disorders and suicide. All of this is at a great cost to our city's education system. Uh, students need more interventions, repeat grades, and are more likely to drop out. And this harms their future careers and wages as workers. Similarly, food insecurity results in lost wages and lost productivity for workers. Uh, you know, chronic diseases such as diabetes and other heart conditions are related to food insecurity, but it's also related to depression, anxiety, and sleep problems. So employees who are food insecure are more likely to miss work and be distracted at work and lose wages. All of that is a huge economic cost for the city. Lost wages and lost profit means lost revenue. It's an extra burden on taxpayers for schools to meet their goals and additional burdens on our healthcare system. Investing in a food justice fund does more than just alleviate the human and economic toll of hunger. It supports the development of a robust food economy that benefits us all. Buyers, sellers, neighborhoods, taxpayers, growers and eaters, Supporting food entrepreneurs and food businesses who have been battered by the pandemic to strengthen our economy. Supporting growers and retail outlets means more economic opportunities in our communities. Two thirds of job creation comes from small businesses. So targeting small organizations and businesses as the Food Justice Fund is intended to is the most likely way to spur job creation in the food sector. 
The Food Justice Fund would also ensure that investments in food infrastructure are prioritized rather than competing with many of the other community development needs and interests that may occur in other, in other fund buckets, such as avenues of hope. And lastly, I want to note that food apartheid was created by purposeful divestment from black communities and is one of the reasons we have such great racial disparities in this city. Nearly three years ago, this council recognized racism as a public health crisis. Creating a food justice fund can prior, that can prioritize ending food apartheid is a critical tool if we are going to start dismantling systemic racism. So we ask that you please invest 3% of the city's American Rescue Plan funds and to create a $10 million food justice fund. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Joyce Danilka, followed by Dana Dolney. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, we can hear you, but you have a bit of an echo. Do you have two devices? If you have two devices on, you can turn one off or mute one. Do you need a minute? I'll get uh, yes. I'll, I'll come right back to you, Ms. Danilka, if you can um, work with your devices. I'll skip ahead to Dana Dolney and I'll circle right back to you. Do we have Dana Dolney? Hi, Dana. <laughs> Hello, my name is Dana Dolney and I live in Polish Hill. I want to thank Councilwoman Gross for calling this hearing to uplift the work of the food ambassadors. I truly hope today will shine a light on the inequities of food access and the realities of food apartheid in Pittsburgh, especially what can and must be done to address the needs of those living in these communities, and specifically how city council can support the solutions identified by the communities themselves. I am a grassroots organizer at Just Harvest, and I have worked throughout the pandemic in some of the hardest hit neighborhoods. I've been part of working groups coming together in those neighborhoods to support urban farms, local co-ops, small grocers and corner stores with fresh produce. I see community groups and neighbors working alongside each other to reclaim abandoned lots, working with children, teaching them about real nutrition, learning how to grow food, and giving them safe spaces in neighborhoods that otherwise have few to none. I can attest that those who are doing the heaviest lifting in this work are doing so because they are weaving the desperately needed food infrastructure back into their main streets and communities because there is none, which is a very important part, there is none. They want food sovereignty and they are rebuilding their communities to be more resilient and self-sufficient because they know what it means for their health and their community safety. But the road to real sustainable change is long and winding without financial support, and many of these communities do not have that time. The needs are critical, and the city has a role to play in supporting solutions identified by leaders and comprehensive development plans. The mayor's listening sessions identified the same needs again and again and again, regardless of the forum's topic. Affordable housing, food access and food security, transportation, public health and safety. They are all intertwined. We need you to understand that. A food justice fund can prioritize, can prioritize women of color and support grassroots work. Community owned and led efforts that could go hand in hand with work already happening at the URA, like the rebuilding of main streets. Food security and infrastructure should be a priority that work, uh, should be a prior, priority in that work, as it is missing from every one of the avenues of hopes communities identified. We have the resources, but to my knowledge, not a single dollar of the $335 million of the city received in federal pandemic funding to date went to increase food access, which is why I'm here today to call on the city to create a $10 million food justice fund. Every council member should be a champion for food access to support the health and safety of their constituents. But we need more than just talk about equity. We actually need action, and that action is making the food justice fund a reality for Pittsburgh. I have 20 seconds left, so I want to thank you, Erica Strasberger. I want to thank you, Bobby Wilson. I want to thank you, Deb Gross, because two-thirds of our council is missing today. Two-thirds of our council is missing to talk about food access and food equity during a pandemic. That is not right. Please, I will work with any of you. Tell me what we need to do to get those others on board. Tell me what we need to do to get those five votes, because we need to make this a reality.
Thank you. I'm going to go back to some of our earlier speakers. I'll start with the most recent one, Joy Stanilka. Did you um, get yourself working? Yes. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon, city council members and staff, colleagues and friends. My name is Joy Stanilka. I live in Edgewood Wilkinsburg neighborhood. I'm a Pittsburgh urban farmer at Hart Farms in the St. Clair area. Prior to that, an educator and research scientist with the USDA Controlled Environment Ag Operation here in Pittsburgh and clinical researcher in human nutrition. I come to you today to express and elaborate on the need for the city of Pittsburgh to create a $10 million food justice fund. I would like to see increased access to fresh, nutritious, culturally significant food crops to more Pittsburghers. I want to provide and ensure food security by growing and producing food that stays in our community. This is especially the case in neighborhoods designated as food apartheid or HFPAs and all the more relevant in our current times and what we have seen with globalization and lacking food availability during the pandemic. As a member of several Pittsburgh Food Policy Council working groups, I'm inspired by the number of people, residents, business owners, and community leaders willing, able, truly driven to do the work the Food Justice Fund can accomplish with your support. This could help support urban farmers through developing community markets, pop-up produce stands, and mobile markets in areas of most need where we could bring our produce to. Our My Urban Farm has worked with several community markets close to us, as well as a mobile market that would travel to areas with limited fresh access, providing affordable items. But our reach is limited to opportunities provided to us in the creation of these resources within our communities. With support, we can make imperative connections in our food systems between farmers and community gardens who can grow and provide to local institutions, joining together in our urban environment to provide fresh, locally grown produce to places like corner stores, which often have heavily processed foods. We can reconnect our communities to healthy eating, sound nutrition, vitality, and peace of mind that come with proper nourishment and nutrition. As a former researcher in clinical human nutrition, I've seen directly the immunomodulatory benefits of healthy eating by consumption of whole foods. As an urban farmer, I've experienced how seldom and inconsistent fresh produce is available at some of our food banks, while being told how much the people love it when fresh produce is available to them. As a city resident, I wonder how many of us have taken for granted being able to drive to the grocery store and select items we want to purchase. I consider how many of us have realized this a luxury for some or not an option at all. With this fund, our youth, our future can be engaged, introduced, and taught about growing food. We can provide culturally significant food crops and teach the community how to cook those crops and other crops through partnerships with chefs and nutritional professionals. We can reinvigorate our communities with knowledge and bring them back to the table and perhaps off the streets. There is so much undeniable community in food, it is at the crux of our sustained well-being. Please support the Food Justice Fund so that Pittsburgh can live up to the title of most livable city. Let us help to feed our people. Thank you for your time and consideration. There we go. Thank you so much. I'm going to go back up to the top to see if anybody else has been able to connect with us who was online, who missed their moment. I'm um, going to go back up to Amanda Pagniello. And if Amanda's there, uh, we'll be followed by Rakib Bay. Amanda, are you? back with us online? No? Okay, Rakib Bay. If not, Tamara O'Brien. Going once, going twice. And then the last one I think we missed was Angela Williams. Is Angela Williams with us? No, okay. So those were all of our registered speakers. Um, and traditionally, there may be people who didn't have the opportunity to register. And so we can offer um, those speakers one minute um, if anyone in the chambers would like to speak. You can just line up. I, won't, I don't know your name, so you can just um, go in whatever order. Thank you. Didn't My name is Yvonne. Oh, am I? My name is Yvonne F. Brown. I live up in the Hill District. Katie Rivers Tires. I'm here today and I'm kind of upset because I was here at 10.30 in the morning. Usually we have these meetings at 1.30 in the afternoon. So from 10.30 in the morning to 3, we made it convenient for Ms. Gross. You ends up praising her, but when I'm down here, you have to believe that I have to watch her 
whereas they all talk to her, she talks while we're talking, you don't really realize. She just come down in groups, and so you just get to, they, they stop and they listen to you. I come down here 20 something years and they can talk while I'm talking. Yeah, Burgess, you see him, how ignorant he was. It was a reverend, the same as him. As soon as the reverend got ready to speak, he got up and left. That shows you that there's something wrong with this reverend. He wants to be treated with reverence, but he doesn't treat us like we're even constituents of his. I'm not in his neighborhood, but he is supposed to represent us all, not just um, himself. Sorry, one minute goes really quickly. Is there anyone else in chambers who would like to make comment? Good afternoon. I'm Sol Moure, a Garfield neighbor. I immigrated from Mexico two and a half years ago, which meant my health risks increased. My son was born here, and because of where we live, his health risk will be greater than mine growing up. I worked at the Food Trust, making fresh produce more affordable to SNAP recipients and people with diet-related illnesses. But we can't keep up with the demand. We need a Pittsburgh Food Justice Fund to help tackle the root causes. Health status shouldn't be determined by a zip code. And people shouldn't have to choose between rent, daycare, or good food. Thank you. Is there anyone else in chambers wishing to make comment? No, thank you so much. Um, we are still joined here in the chambers by Councilwoman Strasberger and Councilman Wilson. Oh, no. Wait, there you are. I couldn't see you for a minute. I apologize. <laughs> I'm going to give uh, Councilman Wilson a chance to respond, followed by Councilwoman Strasburger. The cow's going to defer to Councilwoman. I, yeah, I Absolutely. appreciate it. Councilman Wilson um, was uh, kind enough to let me go first since I have childcare duties that, to get to, if that's all right. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just want to thank uh, first Councilwoman Gross for um, your advocacy on this issue generally, for calling this hearing. <laughs> Uh, which has been incredibly helpful to hear from all of you and, and to thank you all for your advocacy as well and, and those who have left um, and those who I know are advocates but weren't able to join us today. This is an issue that I, um, I care deeply about as well. I might not be out as in front on this issue as Councilwoman Gross, but um, I care about it for a few reasons. One, I think that Pittsburgh can be the healthiest city in America. I do. I know it sounds silly now, but we can be the healthiest city in our country. And it's all tied together, as some have alluded to, right? It's, and it, it has to come in part from having healthy food access for every single resident in the city, um, easily, if easily accessed and affordable. Um, that will improve, obviously, the health of our residents. It'll improve the health of our communities. It is tied to mental health, as been um, mentioned here today. Um, food as medicine is something I deeply agree with and believe in, and for the record, I do think our healthcare systems could um, have some skin in the game when it comes to food as medicine, but that's maybe a different topic um, or a different hearing altogether. Um, it's obviously helpful for connecting our communities, right? Whether it's an urban garden or whether it's a farmer's market or whether it's a shared meal, that sense of connection during a time of increased disconnection in our communities is... Um, has benefits beyond what we can even um, fathom. So, and then, you know, when it comes to climate change and the climate crisis, um, as we talk about district energy and distributed energy systems in our neighborhoods, the same, obviously, as we've heard today is true for um, kind of having district food or district, you know, distributed systems of food like urban gardens or like the corner market or um, employee-owned um, grocery stores. So all, that's kind of what I was jotting down and, and ruminating on as, as all of you were speaking. Um, and I, I do believe the city has to have skin in the game when it comes to the basic building blocks of life, which is, is food and you know healthy water as well. Um, my question, I guess, if I don't know if Councilwoman Gross is able to, to address this or perhaps we can discuss at a later date, is if the county is being asked to have skin in the game here, given their ARPA funding, um, and the, given that they have the, both the county health department and um, human services under their umbrella, 
and whether the school district has been asked to contribute toward a fund, a similar type of fund. Not to my knowledge, I have um, only heard the testimony that we've heard here today. Okay. So that's a discussion I'd love to continue, and I look forward to working with you on um, the details of how we can, um, uh, you know, find the money from the budget and, and work through the budget as we as we move into 2023 and beyond. Thank you, Councilman. Oh, thank you, thank you, Councilwoman. Um, thanks for putting this on, so I can hear from all the wonderful residents and and uh, citizens of the city of Pittsburgh about uh, this issue. And, you know, specifically, I look forward to uh, the continued conversation I know that we'll have in terms of, um, you know, some of the implementation throughout the city that has worked and and where, like, big dollars we spent. So, for instance, one thing that comes to mind is um, the continued effort to have a grocery store in the Hill District and, the, and you know, the challenges or success, successes of that. Um, and how we would do that moving forward, and if that's even a role in this, because I'm hearing a lot of different, um, you know, concerns, and so I'm interested to, um, you know, dive into it, look at the map, um, understand, yeah, really what's existing. I know that I'm in my in my uh, district. I'm familiar with um, a food pantry that is doing pop-ups and different, um, um, different deliveries. Uh, they have a, a grocery store there where you can literally go in and, um, you know, take a cart around and take it off shelves like a normal grocery store. And uh, that's a, it's supported by a lot of, a lot of residents. And, um, you know, I'd like to just understand more about how other parts of the city are trying to tackle that. Uh, but we also have on the north side, there's the, um, the Thrive 18 effort through the Buell that tries to uh, address um, some of these insecurities as well, uh, so that they can actually, I might have the, the name wrong, but regardless under one North side, um, there is under that umbrella, one North side, there is, um, an effort where they coordinate with this food pantry. So I think there's a lot of, uh, continued good information that, that is even probably happening in my district that, you know, this will really bring to surface. So looking forward to talking all that about all that. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm sorry um, about my voice. <laughs> no, I know. I, it's that it's just, time of year. It's just sore throat. <laughs> it's that time of year for sure. Um, I also, in, in closing, want to thank everyone who came down and who worked so hard, especially the food ambassadors and all the food justice fund um, partners who have been advocating now. Feels like almost two years, but at least a year and a half, I believe, of testimony we've heard at city council, especially. Um, as council was developing the um, first received the American Rescue Plan dollars uh, during the pandemic. And, um, and just acknowledge that this is a, a message that you've been um, working on and uh, developing and furthering and that you're still here advocating for us. I just wanted to acknowledge that and thank you for, for your persistence. Um, I always like to kind of recap what I've heard from comments, um, and so I'll do that in closing. And it really strikes me that uh, what I heard was a support for establishing this $10 million food justice fund uh, that would be distributed over uh, four years because so many people talked about what food in investment means. Um, and so these are all things that I heard just today, that food investment is investing in our kids, that it is investing in our main streets, that food investment is investing in our mental health and investing in our physical health, that food investment is investing in a better today, but it's also investing in a better tomorrow, that food investment is, is actually investing in our neighborhoods, and it means investing in public safety, that investing in our food system is investing in jobs and job creation, that investing in food and the food system is investing in our immigrants and being a welcoming city, um, and it's also investing in our educational success and basically investing in the future success of the city at large. Um, so those are very powerful words. 
Um, and I thank you all for coming all the way down here and for being online for such a long hearing um, and, and helping us better understand um, the importance of investing in, in our food system in the city. Appreciate it. Anything else from the members? Okay, I'm going to call this hearing adjourned. Thank you.